Hello and welcome to another episode of Power On. Uh, this one is going to be about the unboxing of this new video card that I've got. Now, I'm not a gamer or anything, but I have been doing some uh, small amount of CAD work and some 3D rendering using a, a piece of software called Blender. And trying to do those renders with the CPU, because my computer is quite old, it's a, an Intel i5. Uh, about four years old I think, four maybe five, but yeah no graphics card and so when you're doing the rendering you really need some grunt behind it. So I don't really know how good this card is going to be. Um, it is one of the latest chips but when it's, it's this particular version is one of the lowest versions of, of this latest card. So anyway let's have a look inside the box and then we'll get it installed and do some quick tests. Quickly opening it up, the usual amount of rubbish and foam. Setup guide, yeah. I wonder if I'm going to be reading that. Uh, installation manual, again, not too sure whether I'll, I'll need those. I'll probably just get the drivers, the latest drivers off the internet. Uh, the card itself, wrapped up in a nice anti static bag. Yeah, look, be careful when you're plugging it in, as it always, you know, don't grab the printed circuit board by the edges or, or by any sort of conductive surface. Just try and hold it by the, the very outsides or maybe the metal plates on the front there. Um, the only other thing inside the box looks like a power lead, because yeah, these things are pretty power hungry. A quick look inside. And, yeah, trying to take my own advice here, grabbing that metal plate at the front. Not touching the printed circuit board. Let's pop that down there like that. Actually, one of the worst surfaces actually to put it back down on would be this polystyrene foam because I don't think that's anti-static at all. Um, so yeah, there we have the back of the card. Not much to see there really. I guess these cards there's not much to see these days because they a lot of them are, are cased in uh, a large piece of plastic. So right along the top edge there we've got the power connector for that, which um, I, I, either I'm going to have that power connector already in the computer or it looks like it's using two into one which will plug into there. And on the front end what have we got? Uh, yeah, four HDMI ports and one DVI port. In fact, for my use, I'm not too sure whether I'm going to be connecting my monitor up to this card at all because um, I'm really looking for the processing power on it, not, not for its display. I'll probably just use this, the, the output from the motherboard. Anyway, there we have it. Let's go and get it installed. So here I am at the PC. Uh, I'm actually underneath the desk. I've decided not to disconnect all the wires. Uh, it's probably just easy to push this card into place. Now I have had to move the hard disk down to create enough room. It's going to go into this PCI Express slot here. Um, and yeah, the card is actually quite long, uh, as you've seen, and, and only just fits in. But anyway, here we go. Let's see if we can pop the card in place. Let's move that anti-static bag away to stop crinkly noises. And again, trying to hold the card by the, uh, I guess in this case, the plastic box on the back. Let's make sure this PCI lock is open. Present the card edge up to the slot. And gently ease it into position. That looks like it's home now. Just flip that lock up. There we go, it snapped shut. And the power. Now I am going to have to use this lead. I was just having a look. I do have some PCI connectors here. There's only six connections on this one and indeed there's there's eight here. Uh, and so this cable they've given me inside the package is going to be have to be used. And so here I'll show you it connected up to the leads from the power supply first which is uh, just sort of out of shot here. But I'm going to have to parallel two up. 
So plugging that one into that one. And I assume the paralleled up just because of the amount of current that the card requires. So yeah, they're the two paralleled up and then plugging the card in. I'm going to put a couple of bolts in there and I'll do those after I switch the video off just to hold the plate in place. Tidy these cables up, pop the cover back on and we'll see how it runs. Okay. Okay, here we are on the desktop. I've installed the video card, didn't have any particular problems. I did have to swing the cable for the monitor across from the motherboard to the new video card for some reason when it booted up uh, it, it didn't want to operate off the motherboard anymore. So, But apart from that no problem, drivers loaded fine, uh, nothing really to report. What you can see here is that I've opened an, an instance of a program called Blender. I've been using Blender in the last couple of weeks to uh, try and do a, a logo for the beginning of the videos that I'm doing and indeed you will have seen the results of that on the, the beginning of this video. And what I'd like to do here is quickly show you a demonstration between the difference in performance between the CPU rendering and the new video card rendering. So without too much further ado I will start the CPU first. I'm not going to make any other changes to the uh, all the sort of many many sort of variables here in this right hand column. I'll keep them constant between the two tests. Um, I will just highlight the fact here that I'm going to go for 50 samples on the render. That's not really enough for a good quality video but for in terms of demonstration here it's going to keep the time down for demonstration. Uh, in terms of what you need to look at here, uh, up in the top right, left hand corner rather, uh, when I press the render button some data will come up here as to how far it is through the render. So without too much further ado, let me start off and we'll press and do the CPU rendering starting now. So you can see the tiles start to be created, the four cores of the computer working on four separate tiles I think. Uh, independently. I can show that the CPU is working quite hard by looking at the task manager quickly and you can see that Blender indeed is using 83, 81%, a little bit higher maybe of the CPU resources. This recording software is using around about maybe 10% possibly just under. So yeah the CPU resources are very much dedicated to the Blender routine that you can see going on. We're on tile number 18 out of 40 and we've taken 43 seconds. So what I'll do is just I'll just speed up this part of the process for you guys. I'll sit here waiting until it finishes and join you back then. So just coming to the end of the render, we can see the time climbing up to just over two minutes. There we have it, two minutes and nine seconds in total for the 50 samples of this particular frame. So I'll move quickly across to GPU compute and press the same button again and let's see how much quicker it is. So immediately you can see those tiles appearing like magic, uh, much, much quicker. And there we have it finished and we're in looking at 12.77, just under 13 seconds. So really quite a quantum leap difference between CPU and GPU compute. I'm really pleased, it means the investment has been worthwhile. And just to give you an idea, uh, the processing time for rendering those six seconds at the beginning of this video was really an overnight exercise just using the CPU, but with this GPU, uh, not that I've actually done it yet, but I think we're looking at uh, minutes rather than hours for that rendering. So that's a great result. Thanks very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you found it informative. If you did, 
click the like button, subscribe, and hopefully see you on the next video. See you now. Cheers.